In this problem, we have an infinitely long cylinder whose radius is A and has a charge density of rho. And uh, exactly symmetrically and concentrically outside of that, we have an infinitely long cylindrical shell whose radius from the center all the way out to the shell is uh, radius B. And its charge density is exactly equal or opposite to that of the inside so that they both total charges actually cancel out. So mathematically, it's equal to this where the uh, charge densities are exactly equal and opposite to each other whenever you multiply the area of this one uh, times and then uh, times the charge density and then the volume of the center the center one uh, so that the total charges ends up canceling out so our goal is to find the potential difference between these two points one some point on the outer shell and a point on the inner shell right here so we can go ahead and do that and, and I guess mathematically the way we want to actually uh, write this out is going to be so v evaluated at b minus v evaluated at a all right and overall we know that the definition of that for electric potential is equal is a negative integral from uh, some uh what is it to uh, a to b or from b to a and we're going to integrate the, the the function that we're going to integrate is the electric field dotted with the the line that we're gonna the path that we're gonna choose here all right and so I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this uh, integral down here or this uh, equal sign down and so of course from the previous problems we know is that we're gonna have to break up this integral in two parts so one part is uh, the electric field that's on the inside between these two uh, uh, cylindrical shells and cylinder and then another one from the inside and that's because the electric field on the inside is different from that to that of inside of this uh, this rod here, this uh, this infinitely long cylinder. And of course, on the outside we know it's zero, but we weren't asked that anyways. The reason why it's outside on zero is because the total charge enclosed is equal to zero because these are two equal opposites. Anyway, so we have these two integrals that we're going to pass. Uh, uh, um, we're going to integrate. One of them is going to go from we're going to integrate from zero to a as we work our way from the. Uh, on this region and then we're going to do the, another one from a to b from the same region but we'll go ahead before we get to that we'll go ahead and write the uh the e dot dl for for this this region right here and so from the previous problem we know that the electric field is equal to this right, rho times s times d not or uh, uh epsilon not pointing the S hat direction, S hat being from uh, the radial outwards for uh, cylindrical coordinates here. And then uh, it started with an infinitely small portion in the uh, DS direction. And then now we're going to do the other region, the region between these two charge uh, distributions here. And so that's going to be from A to B, picking up should always be a continuity between these what we're really doing is we're adding these two but since they're negatives they're just having a negative on the outside just in case you were wondering and so our electric field for this portion again from the problem that was mentioned in the current problem that we're trying to solve is equal to this and we're dotting that with ds of course they're putting it in the both putting in the ds direction so these will turn out to be multiplications right so one of the things that they have all in common is a rho over 2 pi epsilon, or 2 epsilon naught. So we'll go ahead and pull those out of the equation, 2 epsilon naught. Then we have a curly bracket here. And so after we pull that out, all that's left in this direction is uh, the integral from this region of uh, S ds, because these uh, those dots go away. So the integral, the integral of just S ds, is uh, equal to the it's a negative integral so s squared over two evaluated from uh, e to zero minus this next one so we pulled out these constants out to the very front but we still have this constant out here so we can just go ahead and pull out the a squared and so this one is just the negative integral from a to b of just one over s here ds and that's a relatively easy integral to solve. We just have natural log of s evaluated from b to a. And then end our curly bracket here. And we'll go ahead 
And uh, let's go ahead and pull out that negative sign out front. All right. So we have row to epsilon naught, curly bracket. Uh, this will be a squared over two. It's actually positive because we pulled out that negative. Uh, minus zero squared, so this is just gonna be a squared over two. Minus, we have an a squared here. And then the natural log, natural log of b minus natural log of a is equal to the natural log. This is actually positive because we pulled out the negative sign. Natural log of b over a, because of that identity there. And again, as you can see, we have a con, uh, constant a squared common to both of them, so we can go pull, go ahead and pull out that a squared. A squared row to epsilon naught. And what's left is two, more than one half, uh, natural log of the ratio of the two radii of these of these things. So that's our that's our potential. That's our answer right there. Um, but if we if we take this a step further, this is if we look at what is going to make this potential zero, it's always good to try to take a step back and see if this uh, if this answer works out. So in order for all this all this to equal uh, zero, that means the ratio of b to a would have to be approximately point six oh six five something 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 uh, which doesn't really provide us a whole lot of insight that point six oh six oh six doesn't really mean much but that's that's how the ratio of these two radii need to be in order for this entire uh, potential to be zero so not like in incredibly physically uh, um, insightful but and it doesn't really tell us a whole lot on what this uh, if this problem actually or this answer actually is uh, correct but it's just one of those problems at least that I've noticed that you just have to go through and kind of get the rigor of it and uh, this is relatively easy so